Hi everybody, this is Alchemist 2 and I'm back again with another movie review. At long last, I was able to see Year 4 of Harry Potter, which is Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. Now, things become increasingly more detailed <clears throat> and there's more action and adventure involved. And new characters are introduced like Fleur de la Cour and Victor Crumb. And they're from two different academies. And they're very intriguing characters, I find. <laughs> Especially the headmaster for um, the academy, Durmstrang, which uh, Victor comes from. Uh, I'm not going to reveal anything about Igor because that would give away a huge plot point and I'm not about to do that. Uh, let's see, what else was I going to say about the film? You know, from here on out, everything is going to change, just like Hermione says. Things become a bit more ominous from the very beginning when we see Harry's nightmare about the mobile caretaker that goes into this house where Voldemort is being kept and, <clears throat> and then he sees a man there that he doesn't know but he realizes it's one of Voldemort's followers and of course uh, Voldemort's familiar his his boa constrictor kills the local caretaker violently and it's very unsettling and even though that we have the mixture of that darkness and the whole dire quality of that. We also have the humor, which is what we have expected from the very beginning. and It's very enjoyable, but it's a little bit more perilous here with the Triwizard Tournament. And I like the fact that we're introduced to more magical creatures here, and it just opens the world of Harry Potter more to uh, the readers who have been following his story from the very first year to to now and uh, <clears throat> I still think this is a five star film two thumbs way up and as far as movies go I would group years one through four in all one category as uh, just uh, superior to a lot of fantasy epics that I have seen one of those that I would equate it with would be Lord of the Rings because as far as I'm concerned, Lord of the Rings was flawless in the way that it was executed. And they have they have yet to complete The Hobbit, which should have been done first. You know, kind of, kind of a purist in that manner. But um, it's, it's greenlit and they'll finish it so we can all be happy. <laughs> but as, as far as other fantasy films are concerned, like... Um, the Chronicles of Narnia. Uh, they they never they've never filmed the magician's nephew. Now I don't know if it's because it's too similar to Lord of the Rings or or, or what. But those of you who know C.S. Lewis and J.R.R. Tolkien were contemporaries, so of course C.S. Lewis gave some of his ideas from from his comrade. But um, maybe that's the reason why. Uh, Magician's Nephew was never produced as a film. They always start with the second book. Of course, the third book, Horses Boy, is really not about Narnia at all. It's just about the horse's perspective of uh, what's going on as he, he sees the world through his own eyes. And, uh, of course, the fourth book is Prince Caspian, and I had a lot of issues with that. I, I liked it, but it just wasn't accurate with, with anything and of course uh, the fifth book which is Don Treader which they released last year I, I thought was excellent and it was very consistent with the book and, and everything especially with Eustace's transformation but I'm getting off topic and I'm sorry I really loved all the new characters especially Robert Patterson's portrayal of Cedric Diggory I think he was absolutely perfect 
I think he was rather young when he did this movie, and maybe this this was how he was um, discovered. But uh, Cedric, his his life is very tragic, and I'm not going to say what happens to him. But those of you who have read the book, you are as crushed as I am when you see the results of everything that occurs, especially at the very end of the Triwizard Tournament. And I think what well, uh, not Walmart, but what Dumbledore said was a foreshadowing. I had never noticed this before, but they, they do foreshadow a lot of things through just the way they um, they say certain phrases and the way they, they look at um, look at other characters and it's very telling and I, I like the way that, that the director did that with his care uh, the way that the actors portrayed the characters because I believe that they they um, they did a really magnificent job and, and this is a really stellar film I, I can't t tell you how much I, I love the Goblet of Fire and I have yet to review um, Order of the Phoenix, Half-Blood Prince, and Deathly Hallows Part 1, which are still on my list to be reviewed, but they will be. So, be on the lookout for those three, because I am enjoying seeing these for the second time around, because I'm, I'm noticing so many things that I didn't the first time through, and, and seeing them without people chattering behind me was really appreciated, and, uh, I'm not really <coughs> the kind of nerd that would say, well, they didn't do this right, or this isn't the way I would have portrayed it. No, I think that everything was done just as I would have pictured it in my mind's eye, and even better than, than the book, if, if I could say that without getting flamed for it. But I, I just think that these movies are, are epic, and they are absolutely spellbinding, and you'll be bewitched by them. I just, I can't tear my eyes away. I'm completely transfixed and I'm, I'm never ever bored when I watch a Harry Potter film. It's, it's just, I don't know what it is about it. It's some that magical combination of good versus evil and that just the, the storyline and the characters and it's nothing short of outstanding. It, it truly is a phenomenon in and of itself. And one of these days I'm, I'm hoping that I can go to Universal Studios, maybe when it's a little less crowded, because I heard that um, the Harry Potter part of the park is really, really, really stuffed with people, but I really want to go so I can ride the Hogwarts Express and uh, get sorted into my house, even though I have done the sorting through uh, the internet, and I, I was a Ravenclaw, which didn't really surprise me all that much. <laughs> I'm so glad I didn't get thrown into Hufflepuff. It was, no, I'm I'm not cowardly at all. But uh, <laughs> nothing against Hufflepuffs. I'm sorry, but it's just I would never want to be uh, sorted into Hufflepuff or Slytherin. Just just because I'm just saying that those two houses I don't care for. But uh, other than that. I have that to look forward to on my bucket list, so um, I will be reviewing those three films, uh, Cedar Rapids, a couple of other movies, oh, and I wanted to do one more thing before I signed off, but these are my other countries that I have drawn that weren't uh, featured in Italia. I actually had a little thing that said country's not featured in the, in the Italian series. Uh, I've got Colombia, Guatemala, and Quebec, and Nova Scotia, Costa Rica, Panama, and Honduras. And actually, Colombia is wearing his flag's color, so is Quebec. Uh, Quebec should have a Fleur de Lis on him, but he does not. He is independent of, um, of his brother, uh, Canada, though he does look a lot like his brother. Uh, Nova Scotia is a lot like Scotland, though she's blonde like, uh, her big brother, France. Um, Colombia looks a lot like, uh, Spain does, although he's darker. 
uh, you can see all the the mid American countries are a lot like Spain. They take after Big Brother Spain here. Uh, Guatemala has her uh, flags countries, and actually the the uh, there's a crown of I think it's a laurel wreath on the on the flag, but her hair is supposed to represent excuse me resemble that laurel wreath. Uh, Honduras, it's the same thing with him. I didn't want to do stripes like with Guatemala because I think that he would not want to copy her and be his own country. Uh, Costa Rica has the same colors as uh, America does. Uh, same thing with Panama. She too has uh, red and blue for her flag colors. It, I'm not sure which one. I, I really like Colombia here because I have a uh, an acquaintance from Colombia who is in my uh, biotech 102 class and uh, she was really sweet so I thought I would uh, dedicate a character to her even though I know my character here is male but Colombia is actually cool I, I really like Colombia John uh, Nova Scotia I had a friend from there but I don't know what happened to her Quebec I uh, have this really awesome friend from Quebec. Uh, he speaks French and English, and he is a ski instructor of all things. I don't know how old he is now, but he acts like he's about my age, even though he's really young. He's got a lot of responsibility teaching those people how to ski and not fall on their circuses. Um, Guatemala, I drew just because. Honduras, same thing. Ditto with Costa Rica and Panama. And I just thought, Panama, her... Uh, design was kind of um, inspired by those Panama Jack <laughs> uh, logos that you see though although she has uh, sunglasses and Panama Jack has a pith helmet and uh, linen glasses and <laughs> I don't know what I was thinking with Panama but Panama is a just a laid-back country and she um, She's like Costa Rica. She just is very, um, very free-spirited, and it's like other Latin countries. They just, uh, don't give a crap what the rest of the world thinks about them. They just love life and love, love music, and love is everything to these people, and I was glad I was finally able to draw them. So, basically that's all I have to say for now, but... I'll be seeing you later when I do my next review, so stay tuned.